Hi everyone, Kent Larsen from Smart House Electric. Um, we're going to look at this guy here today, fans. Um, you see them uh, in the tanning beds, you definitely should in the, in the bigger ones, uh, or else we have a serious issue uh, uh, for some cooling. And um, typically you find them uh, just like the one you see here um, with a, uh, a capacitor there and the reason being is that these fans are actually three phase and uh, to make it flexible for this these uh, these beds to be single phase uh, you will need that third leg uh, to uh, to not matter and and so that's how they're designed and it has a further purpose that I'll, I'll mention in, in, in just a, a brief moment here. So, what happens, and let's, let's just take a look at, the, at another picture here. It's a little bit small, uh, but... Um, so this is the three phases normally. They go each of the phases, say L1, has a total cycle here of 360 degrees and um, each one each phase has that 360 degrees and then they are uh, off by 120 degrees to one another so that one comes in and then the other one takes over and then the next one comes over and that's how the fan works so you have these coil inside of the fan that like keeps on being like taken over by the next phase and the next phase and the next phase and so it goes like one two three one two three and that's how the fan spins by magnetism now if you're missing one fan it uh, one one of these faces here uh, you will have a big loss and a, and a huge startup in the next uh, for the next phase but also you will have the issue that if one of these phases is uh, in the wrong order uh, it will just stand there and hum or it might run the wrong way and so that's why you have this capacitor because if you instead of one of these phases you can just take a random one of these and what you will do, let's just for, for the ease of it, remove the blue one. What you will do is that you will hook up the red phase, L2, and connect a capacitor to it. And what the capacitor do uh, or <laughs> does is that it um, that it takes the phase and and pushes it. 90 degrees over that that means that if you let the red face through straight to the fan then 90 degrees later you will have the capacitor giving out its power and so you create a third phase from this capacitor and the great thing here is that by attaching it to a phase you will always have the capacitors phase after so you are dictating the order no matter what the situation and no matter how you hook it up you will always have the same phase rotation and so that's what the uh, that's the two huge advantages you have from using a capacitor using only two phases is that you have this um, dictated rotation and you can have a um, it coupled up on single phase without changing anything in your fan system one drawback you have on this and this is very technical and it's so little it, it doesn't matter very much is that you have something called slip current so by not having the last 30 degrees to have the same as this 
blue face for an example is that that causes a little bit of loss but it's it's minuscule you really have a lot of advantages using these capacitors so and that's let's, let's take a look here with some pictures again here and and so that that is what this thing um, up here is doing let's do the use the cursor here um, that's simply that capacitor so how can you tell if this capacitor is bad for for troubleshoot uh, say and a pretty uh, clear one of the most that this is the most clear indication of a bad capacitor that is that the fan is standing and humming and if you walk over to it or in this case here we got one of these um, blower type here now be careful about this trick here it's it's not that safe so be really be careful use a screwdriver and what you do is you just simply um, stick the screwdriver in just right on the edge and just kind of push mechanically the fan to start and by the capacitor uh, missing is just simply just standing there and and not getting this rotation started but you can actually start it mechanically that way and this will make the fan spin but if you really know this machine well and you know how it's normally working you can tell that it's running not quite as fast and it's simply because it's missing that last leg those 90 degrees from the previous phase it's missing that so it's it's jumping a full a full um phase you can say there's like a gap of a full phase until that it's uh it's it's being engaged again and here is another thing is that you can actually grab this this screwdriver and start the fan running in reverse just as well like it will be just as easy to start the fan in reverse as uh, as in uh, forward so that's a very clear indication um, otherwise uh, you can get lucky if it starts every time uh, or you might even have a little bit of draft in your in your ducting system that it's hooked up to so that you actually don't experience that it's stand, just standing there humming because it's getting a little bit of help from the venting system but the thing is that the machine will be a little bit hotter and is running a little bit slower than it usually is now this can be other problems of course but definitely try I mean a capacitor is relatively inexpensive so I would start there uh, when you get to that there's of course ways to check this capacitor as well and so for that you will need to disconnect it from the fan and and before you do all that you disconnect the power to the fan so that you don't have live legs that you are removing from the capacitor that could short out or even shock you. So for an Ergoline, you have this plug right here. You can just unplug that and then you will have power away from this, this area. Now the capacitor is charged with, with power typically. And so when you disconnect the leads from there, uh, what I'll do is that I'll take a screwdriver and make sure that you're holding it on the plastic part and then you uh, put it across the two uh, legs. Let me show you a picture here of a. Yeah, ah, it's kind of hard to see the way that it's turned, but if you look really close here, you can see that here up in top, you got two prongs. So you just take the metal and just put it right across there, um, across those two and you will discharge the capacitor so it, it might give a little knitter there but uh, uh, it, that's all okay you definitely because when you take your multimeter and put that across there and you have a charged capacitor you will kill the capacitor measurement function of that multimeter basically for sure uh, if you have a really nice meter like a fluke it might take it or it might not
discharge it. Um, if you don't have a capacitor uh, measurement, and which m most people don't have, uh, there's kind of a vague indication here that you can use, and that is to put it into continuity test. And so, when you have it dis fully discharged again, you put it on, you can see it starts out with uh, a low uh, resistance, that, and then it, it, it quickly uh, uh, rises in, in, uh, in uh, resistance. And that is simply because that we are charging the capacitor with the DC voltage from the continuity test. And so you're filling up the capacitor, and in that process, the resistance rises. And that's how a capacitor works. So that's some indication that the capacitor is working, but it's not a full-fledged sure thing, because you can't really tell if that capacitance is correct or not. It could still be kind of limping along. And, and, and but if you're measuring like a straight up, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, full on fledged resistance, uh, full scale resistance or limited resistance right away, or it's leading 100% uh, right away, uh, either one of those two, then you know that you have a bad capa uh, capacitor for sure. But many times it's like it's kind of in between those two, so uh, even though it's bad. So um, again, they're not that expensive. And uh, you can try, you know, the, the mechanical test there. You know, they just like give it a give it a whirl there, and um, and you can you can you can see it going into speed or out of speed. The most difficult position is where the fan is running at less speed than normal. Uh, that can definitely be the capacitor, and that's the place to start. It can be other things. It can, you know, if, if you have a regulated output from your fan board, you know, that could definitely be it. Or it could just simply be bad, uh, something bad with a winding or something in the in the in the motor, in the fan motor. But here's where you start, really. So um, that's uh, fan capacitors. Uh, uh, really a smart thing. Uh, for uh, for single phase drive and and uh, not so also you know now that uh, as an electrician you don't have to be careful with uh, L1 2 and 3 it's just put it on here make sure you check there is a couple of machines out there I know that the Heartland Acclaim has a true three phase uh, a fan motor so that one you need to make sure that the rotation is correct but that is the only one I can think of at this point. So that one there, be careful. But an Irvine, a UWV, uh, KBL, all that good stuff, uh, don't worry about it. Just hook the leads up, you're good to go. So here is Kent Larsen here from Smart House Electric. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be right back with something else. Take care.